Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. Would you, would you like to say it, Dalton? No, I don't want to. I don't want to say one it. One time. I don't want to say it. Say it one time. Let me just see it. how it feels. I don't, I don't want to try it on. Just I don't want to say it. Say it one time. Look at me right now. I don't have the qualifications to say that. One time. No. Say no. it. No. Look, you've got, you said it yourself, you've got the Coolio hair, all it's right? It's not bad right now. Right now it's Saltio hair, okay? It's like a cereal for old women. Say it one time. I got a fun fact. Say that. it I, one time. I don't want to say it right Say now. it one time, Dalton. First and no, foremost. No, 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 no. We're not going forward until you say it. I don't want to say it. It has to be it's said. It's not happening. It has to be said that it's the key to variety hour. I actually don't even know the exact phrase. For a the while. The biggest books, the bestest looks, and all the charm it ever took. Say it, Dalton. For a while, it Dalton, was why are you where we so verb the something out of literature. Yes. And I liked verb the something out of literature. What don't you like about this? It's terrible. Why is it terrible? It's terrible. I feel Enumerate. like... I feel like Ric Flair, and I'm not a Ric Flair personality. You are not a Ric Flair personality. Absolutely not. Put a cigarette in your mouth, Absolutely and you not. think you're, you're Ric Flair all the night long. That's fair. Maybe that's what say we're it missing. one time. I'm not gonna say it. Say it one. Put your pen on. in your mouth like a cigarette and say it. I don't have a pen. That's your pen. No. You don't know where this pen's been. I don't know this where this isn't my. Been. This isn't. This is your pen. Is it my pen? Yeah, that is your pen. This variety hour has just gone downhill. I just had my. So what is it? It's, it's the biggest you... looks. No, the biggest books, the bestest looks, and all the charm it ever took. Yeah, it's awful. Doesn't that feel good on it your tongue? It does not. It does. No, it feels like sandpaper. It's it's sweet like Sour Patch Kids. That's so bad. Anyway, I realized something this week. What? You may have noticed I've done something with my hair. Oh, have you? I've been spraying that sea salt spray in it, right? I told you about that. I spent $10 on a bottle of basically salt water. Yeah. Yeah, I realized I'm literally salty now. Like, my hair came down and whipped me as, like, because the window was down. Like, it whipped me in the mouth. Like, oh, God, I'm so salty. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> And you do sort of resemble a hamster or a gerbil. That's fair. So if you just sat there sucking on your hair, no one would blame you. Uh, it's gotten to the point at work where, like, people don't even acknowledge me. Like, even if I need help, like, people just walk past my cubicle just, like, not making eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Yeah. Don't make eye contact. Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's not bad. Yeah. It's, uh, I feel like I'm progressing into, like, possibly, like, late stage Lieutenant Dan. Like, you've seen Forrest Gump, right? Yeah. Like, when he gets back from Vietnam, they go to the bar. Yeah, I look like that right now. I'm post-Vietnam Lieutenant Dan. Stolton, you chose everything about the yeah, way you Yeah, I kind of like it. It's not bad. It's a good summer look. And you want to complain about it anyway. Yeah. Did you just say a good summer look? It is a good summer look. You have seasonal looks. I do have seasonal looks. What is wrong with you? You don't have seasonal looks? I wouldn't know how to look. It's fair. You really don't change, like, even your clothing appearance. Like, you wear, like, the same thing. You wear the uh, the muscle shirt with the button-up shirt, maybe a coat. And jeans. Not jeans. You don't wear jeans. You wear khakis. I did find a pair of jeans. That's where, so I had a pair of jeans in the the skit for uh, The Road, remember? You did. I did. I found, I had a pair of jeans. They're mom jeans. But they are jeans. I do own a pair of jeans. I once went out with a friend. Uh, he used to be my landlord when I was living in Cameron. Uh, we were going to take him out to the bar. And, like, the man has no fashion sense whatsoever. Very socially awkward. Very strange. Dusky? Not Dusky. Not Dusky. That's funny. And I said to him, Scott, we're going to take you out. So it is Dusky, but he had to put Scott in there just to make sure that, Scott, that Dusky doesn't know the stories about him. It's not Dusky. So I say, Scott, we're going to take you out. You want to find yourself a nice man. We're going to take you out. We're going to hit the town. Dress nice, okay? Don't wear your mom's jeans. Get you some nice clothes. We're going to do this. Misinterpreted it and literally borrowed pants from his mother to wear. And, like, I don't know what to do with that at that point. That's difficult. It's a rough situation. So we went out. We had ourselves a time nonetheless. But, like, no, you really don't change appearance ever. Like, if it's cold, you might put on a coat, but that's it. I shave my head sometimes. You do. You do. Periodically. I'm but. like 10 degrees away from just like, it's all shorts and uh, sandals from here on out. I figure that, so despite the superfluous and braggadocious manner of the way that Variety Hour is introduced with the bestest looks, um, I don't, I figure if my, if the way I look is the most interesting thing about me, I've done something wrong. So that, that goes back to, um, Boy, I don't know. There was an actor 
who struck it big on television. This must have been 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he didn't come out as homosexual. He was outed. Mm -hmm. But he never thought to make a point of it. Okay. It's not like he was hiding his sexuality. Um, so th basically the paparazzi cornered him and asked him about it. And I, I will remember this. I, I'll never remember who that guy was, but I remember this. I will remember this quote for the rest of my life. He said, I never figured my sexuality should be the most interesting thing about me. That's fair. And that's, that's the way that I try to live. My looks shouldn't be the most interesting thing about me. The things I own shouldn't be the most interesting thing about me. The people I talk to shouldn't be the most interesting thing about me. If any of those things, or, or my race, my color, my creed, my sexuality, if any of those things are the most interesting thing about me, I have failed in most areas of life. Okay. I've always had poor hair choices, like regardless, like the farther you go back, like there's always an example. So like this was not a big stretch for me. No, it's, not at it's all. just something I always wanted, and I, honestly, I have the natural hairstyle for it. Yeah, so I'm okay with it. I mean, they're getting there. I'm gonna tighten up a little bit. Dalton, no. Yeah. I, no, I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm saying don't make it sound like it was just sort of a decision that you didn't really make. You happened into. I sat around for a long time, like I should get dreadlocks. You really this. wanted it. Yeah. You. You are you're fairly concerned about appearance. That's fair. Right? Yes and no. I would I would I would be interested in you explaining the no part to me. The no part? Yeah. I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I'm I'm not saying I'm not judging people who are um interested in their own appearance. So most people A little bit I am, I suppose. Most people make sure they look really, really, really good before they go anywhere, you know, they put on their nice clothes, whatever, whatever. Um, I will do that in a sense. Like, I won't go to the store in, like, sweatpants or anything, like, unless I'm incredibly lazy that day. But, like, I, I kind of do the same but opposite. I purposely make myself look ridiculous instead of making myself look better. Like, look typically good. So you, you're sort of anti-hemian. Not bohemian. Anti-hemian. He's the anti-hemian. Or is that bohemian? That would be bohemian. Okay, I, I, I'm confused on what bohemian sort of means, I suppose. But, you know, it's... I, I found, like, I, I really... I thought bohemians were people who were poor but dressed themselves up nice. I thought that was a bohemian thing. Poor, yes, but, like, dressing nice, I don't think that came from anything. Like, a bohemian's more just like the free spirit. You take life by the horns kind of thing. But anyway, so, like, going out in public, if you dress normal and you look normal, people, for the most part, will leave you alone. But if you get cornered in a situation, they're going to want to talk to you. They want to bother you. If you dress like I dress and you go out, people aren't going to really leave you alone because you're a, you're an object. Like, they, they're they interested. They want to be like, what is this creature? But the only thing they're going to come over and say is be like, so what's going on with the hair? And I'll look you know, it's dreadlocks. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool, man. They'll leave me alone. They won't ask anything else. When I had my afro, people come over and be like, can I touch it? I'm like, no, that's weird. But go ahead. And they asked, like, how do you wash it? I'd be like, well, with my hands. How do you wash your hair? And then they leave. A, it's, not, it's a defense mechanism. A, no, it's not. It's, a, it's an attention mechanism. B, your autobiography absolutely has to be titled Salty Objectified. Salty Objectified? It's not a bad title. It's not bad. <laughs> the Objectification of Saltification. It's not bad at all. <laughs> I can get behind it. And, like, I think it more so, it comes down to bugging Jim. Dalton on display. Because Jim hates it with a passion. Like, uh, one of the first days, like, I'd taken it down from the braids. I just had it ponytailed. Like, it wasn't even down. It was pulled back, and it kind of looked like, you know, just the man bun. And he's just staring at it one day. Because I went to dinner with him. He's like, what? Do you wash that? I'm like, well, not every day, but you're not really supposed to wash your hair every day. He's like, yeah, you are. Every day. It's disgusting. And I don't like it. And we move past it. Yeah. 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 I suppose you've both got your points. That's fair. You're supposed to wash your hair every day that you sweat, for sure. For sure, yes. If How I was going to the gym, happen? this would be a different thing. But I don't go to the I did yoga this week, by the way. Did you? I did, actually. Did you now? I felt good. I got the yoga mat off. I did about a... Got the yoga mat out. <laughs> 
<laughs> what kind of yoga are we talking about? One for Freud this week. <laughs> yeah, a, did you do yoga or did you do Josh? I don't what know, but I'm sore. <laughs> No, it never fails. Like, as soon as the warm weather hits, we had a nice, warm, rainy day like two days ago. Yeah. The minute warm weather hits, I'm like, why have I been eating all this crap for the last five months? I should eat good food. I should do something. And that'll last for like three weeks. And then I'll be like, no, this is stupid. This is hot. It's hot outside and I don't like it. So, yeah, we're on the upward streak right now. It's it's the good part. Yeah, I I have to believe that there's something... um natural about that there's something innate about that because you feel better You've been... no, no, no i mean the i mean the uh bunkering down and eating garbage during the winter well you're stuck inside you have nowhere to go if you, you need, go outside it's miserable you need more calorie you need more fat in the winter but we don't we don't think of those things in today's society because we That's have fair. air conditioning That's right true. um you're never most people are never cold for more than three minutes at a time uh, once that car heater warms up, maybe they've got it cranked up. Um, but they've also done studies as recently as like a hundred years ago. People slept 10 hours a night in the winter. 10 plus hours a night in the winter. Yeah. Do you sleep any differently in the winter than the summer? Not really. No, you can't. No, you, right? you can't. But you know, that would make sense though, because it's usually darker in the winter. And it's a lot quieter in the winter. And so there is research to suggest that your body... It's like hibernating. Most people's bodies act like your looks. You need a season to them. Okay. Like you, need, you need recuperation when your, body, when your body is struggling with things. You need a, a time for recuperation. As soon as that warm weather hits, though, and you step outside, and it just feels nice, and it feels fresh, it's re revigorating. It yeah. really is. You're getting out of that winter funk. You've been stuck inside for four months. It's wonderful. There's also something known as seasonal depression. That, that's a true thing. That is, for sure. Anyway. Unless, unless you live in California. And it's just miserable all the time. Well, it's just spring all the time, right? Hmm. Well, that actually sounds nice, but California sounds terrible. I don't think I'd survive in California. Why not? It doesn't sound good to me. Well, I think the reason you might not survive in California is your theory about going out and looking normal and people leaving you alone. That's the inverse in California because everyone looks weird. So people like me stick out who have put no thought into their looks. Sometimes I just go to like the feed and grain store and just run amok and just touch things because I know it bothers people. It's fun. You should give it a try. The... So sometimes I just go to the feed and grain store and go, Mm. No, it's like, a, you've never been to like a feed and grain store? <laughs> no. So like, you walk in there, and I will guarantee the man at the cash register is not working. He's leaned over the counter talking to a man in coveralls, discussing something. Sure, I mean, you get that from the name of the store. That's just the way that a store operates. So when I walk into the feed and grain store, operations shut down, because he shouldn't be in here. Something's wrong. See that, so... We could go test it right now. We could make it into a variety hour. I guarantee it'll work. You're proving my point, not yours. No, I'm just agreeing with you. That your, your, look is, your look is calculated for attention. Eh. What do you mean, eh? eh? You've got beads in your beard. I do. I what like purpose them. do they serve? I like them. Exactly. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing it. Yeah. I'm not attacking you, yeah, Salty. I'm not being attacked, but like, like I, I, I'm not purposely seeking people to like flock to me over like I just kind of way I like the way it looks it's a good look for me okay all right okay yeah that's all I got I just really want to talk about my hair for a while like how salty it was and it just went out of, just went out of whack but yeah yeah if you got salt in your hair you probably should shower every day Nah. Well, I shower every day, but I put my hair in a shower cap. You've got a shower cap, Dalton? I do. I do. It's the most attractive thing you'll ever own, let me tell Next you. Next week, I want you to wear the shower cap for Variety Hour. I don't want to. I want you to wear the shower cap for Variety Hour. It's bad because, like, once you step out of the shower and you look over the mirror, you're like, oh, God, what are you doing? It's not a good look. It's just solid blue. It's not floral or anything. I'm so sorry. I'm going to buy you a floral shower cap, and you're I'd going wear to wear it on Variety Hour. I'd wear it. So... You were a child of the 90s. Did yeah. you ever have frosted tips? No. You ever seen how they do that? No. They basically put a shower cap on your head, right? And take essentially a crochet hook and pierce a hole in it and just like pull hair out. Pull hair out okay. so they can just frost the tips. Most painful, terrible process ever. Well, that's because Absolutely you've got awful. curly hair, though. It could be because I have curly hair. That's fair. So you're pulling, like, 
most people you're just yeah you're I guess that teasing the hair out the hook is actually catching your hair i don't understand like i okay so i just use the term teasing he did this is a weird variety hour we're talking about uh, how we look in our hair but that's fine uh my father has very thin very straight hair very fine he uses a 99 cent black comb that he got at the gas station in 1963. And he's been combing his hair with that same comb ever since. Carries it in his back pocket. Occasionally mid conversation, he will just nonchalantly take it out, give the pompadour a couple swipes, put it back. That's the man who taught me hygiene habits. So I assume that's how people comb their hair. So. For way longer than I'm proud to admit, I used one of those tiny little black, like fine teethed comb, fine toothed comb. I don't know the phrase for that. Thing. Toothed? Yeah, I used that to comb this. Not a fun process. I discovered a hairbrush and it changed my life. Like it's simple things like that that you just come across and you're like, oh, oh my God, this is so nice. So first off, you can't blame your father for that. He didn't know. No, he didn't right. know. He's never dealt with something like this. Um, Lots of, so I knew a woman who was a single mother and who had a mixed child mm -hmm. and she had a, she had a similar, similar story because she, I mean, she'd never had yeah. that type of hair. She didn't know what to do. Um, but there's also, I mean, you go to the, the quote from Fight Club, we are a generation of men raised by women. So what happens for a lot, I was raised by my mother. My mother didn't know how boys or men do things. Okay. So I didn't get any of that. There are other men who were raised by their mothers, who their mothers didn't know to raise a different, who were raised like, like, like girls, right? Mm -hmm. So, ra well, I, and again, that's something that is sexist language. I say raised like girls, they were raised, um, knowing everything about how to do their hair, knowing everything about how to do things like that. Things that we, at least in the Midwest, associate with femininity. Okay. Taking care of one's appearance. Okay. Um, taking care, I have no idea, I mean, look at these things. That's fair, yeah, I'm bad um, about that too. There are, there, are, there are guys who spend a lot of time on their nails. There are guys who spend a lot of time in, in the mirror, as it were. That's fair. Um, so it's a, it's a weird dichotomy, I think, and it is something that seems to have been brought around. So, like, like you said, your father didn't know how to, to do your hair. I didn't have a father to tell me how to comb my hair. So that's why this happens. Like, I've got it now, right? Yeah. My hair, every hair on my head is the same length. Because I buzzed it and then let it grow out. That's not how regular people do hair. No, no. Um, and, like, I... This is more of a product of me rather than like what you learn from your parents because like I, I've always had long hair. I mean, I went a period of time, I didn't cut my hair for six years. I don't understand when it's time to get a haircut. And like I assume most people like schedule this like, oh, three weeks in, time, now. For, time for a trim. Not now. now. Or, you know, they look in the mirror like getting a little long. I'll look in the mirror and be like, that's getting a little long. I should consider a haircut. And then three months later, I'll be like, all right, this is unacceptable. We got to get this fixed. It's a problem. Uh, I, I, I just don't. It doesn't click with me. Yeah, one of the problems I have with appearance is that I fix my hair after my shower. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if the, the mirror's still fogged up because I'm not wearing my glasses anyway. So my hair is a rough estimate anyhow, but like these hairs right here, these will get to the point where they're just sticking straight out. Yeah. I have no idea that's going on. Um, I will know it is time to get a haircut when I am having to glop on so much junk just to keep the sides of my head from fraying out. That's fair, that's a fair assessment. So, plan in a little shindig this weekend. Jeremy, you know Jeremy, good friend of mine, Jeremy. Uh, his firstborn child is due in May. Good for him, congratulations all around. Uh, but we have come to the conclusion at this point, his uh, youth is over. Because I mean, it's all yeah. about the baby after Dead that. man walking. Dead man walking. Uh, got married, did the bachelor party, but we are throwing him his official Jeremy is too old to party party this weekend. We've we've talked a little bit about things like this on the channel. Remember, we wanted to instead of birthdays, we wanted to have death days. Yes. 
So, uh, basically what we're doing for him is, you know, this he wants one last good hurrah. One good night with the boys, go have fun, uh, knowing wholeheartedly that any time, it's over. He's got to dedicate his life for a good period of time to the baby before we're ever even going to get to see him again. And that's fine. He's doing what he should be doing as a parent. going to teach that baby how to comb his hair? He's going to teach that baby how to comb his hair. I hope it comes out with hair like mine so I can have a purpose in life. Anyway... So the plot of this debacle is he just wanted to get together. He wanted to go to the casino. He wanted to play some cards. Go to the bar, have a couple Irish car bombs since it's going to be right around St. Patrick's Day. And then go back to my house and just, you know, have a, a night like we always used to have in college. Gonna drink a lot and just have fun. I have decided that we are going to make every season of drink that we've went through, like the college age... The after college age, like every definitive drink that represented that portion of our life. And we're going to serve them all that night. It's a bad idea. Everything. So I'm making Sneaky Pete. Somebody's making summer beer. Everybody's making that one cocktail, that one concoction that like made up a couple years of our life. And we are serving everything that night. Sneaky Pete is sort of a wine, right? Sneaky Pete is a wine. So a, you have uh, beer, wine, dark, light. Everything. Uh, jungle juice, if you will, Spicoli, depending on your region. It's a, a family recipe. Someone's not making it out. Summer beer. I used to love summer <clears throat> beer. One of my favorite drinks way back in the early days of college. Lemonade and beer? Is that what you're doing? It's a shandy of sorts. Uh, somebody, it was Dusky, actually. He's like, so how do I, what, what do we need to make summer beer? I said, it's simple. You get a 30-pack, cheap beer, a handle of vodka, and one of those powder things of Country Time Lemonade. And you just mix it all together. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, I don't want to drink that. That sounds awful. That sounds just absolutely god-awful. So that's what I'm doing this weekend. you become civilized. I've become civilized. I've aged a little bit because, like, I, I just, I'm not sure if I can do it. Uh, but, yeah, summer beer, Sneaky Pete, which is like a jungle juice that I've always made. It's a family thing. Uh, Caribou Lou's. Do you remember the song? 151. Malibu, Malibu Rum. rum and pineapple, pineapple juice. And we're having Caribou Lou's all night. Flaming Dr. Peppers. It's going to be a What time does the Shinda get together? So they are going to be coming over Saturday right around 4 or so. We've got this is going to end at 6.30. It, it could. It could. This we're not going to start drinking until around 7 or 8. 7 or 8 Casino. After casino, we're going to the bar for car bombs. After the car bombs, then we're going home for this. What's the drink where you drop a shot of whiskey into a beer? What's that called? Uh, well, the car bomb is the drop shot in the Guinness. Is right. that what you're thinking of? No, 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 no. Boilermaker? Boilermaker. Would you rather have a boilermaker car or bomb. a car bomb? Really? Yeah. So I went to First Ward House. You're familiar? No. Bar in St. Joe. It's one I used to frequent all the time okay, in yes. college. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I went in there one night for a round of car bombs. And, like, we were going to race. There were three of us. And it ended up, like, the owner was there, and, like, he knew one of the guys that we were hanging out with, and he was like, oh, I don't know who won. Let's do it again. And I think we went through six car bombs back to back. That was a mistake. Wow. And that's where we're starting this week. You want to come out? No, I don't want to come You want to come a wassailing? A what? A wassailing? Wassailing? What is that word? You want to go Rassle? Wassel. Wassail? Wassel? However you want to pronounce it? It's like a Christmas festivities. That is not a word. It is. That's not a I'll word. I'll look it up for you later. We're gonna go we're gonna get in some shenanigans. Would you like to go get in some shenanigans? No, go back to the previous word. How do you spell that? W A I S S A L I N G. Okay, so where's the I N G on the way you're saying it? Oh, I, I'm, I'm shorting it to the, just the in. Okay. A wasslin. A wasslin. You got to put the uh in front of it too. A Are wasslin. you saying rassle? No, we're not going to. Well, unless you want a rassle, then we could go. Are you saying rascal? No. The rasslin' rascals? No. We're going to have to take you out just once. Just once come out with us. It'll be a good time. There was one time when I was hosting writers groups that always sort of ended in drinking that we started making Boilermakers with Bud Light Platinum mm. and a 100 proof whiskey. Those were those are dangerous mm. because that is, what what's Platinum? 3% higher than regular beer? Something like that. And 100 proof whiskey is, you know, it's just a shot, but it's 20% yeah. more alcohol. So, uh, Sneaky Pete's my danger drink. 
and essentially it's just it's a blend of like five different types of wine. Sneaky Pete sounds like Stranger Danger. It doesn't it's, sound like your danger it's drink. Not good. It's like five different blends of wine. You should start calling it Stranger Danger. Straight Everclear, fruit, and just a little Seven Up, just to give it some fizz. Yeah. Uh, it tastes like a oh you put a bunch of fruit and stuff, maraschino cherries as well. It tastes like a sweet Kool Aid or like a sweet wine. Two glasses in though, you're completely leveled. I am not going to be able to feel come Sunday. Did you ever drink Night Train? No. No. We talked about Night Train a lot. Like, we, I would have a Night, night Train, train night. We could do it. We, we might have to for a live stream or something. Special order some Night Train. It, it never ends well. Night Train Special Reserve. It never... Yeah, Special Reserve. <laughs> yeah. Night Train. First class. <laughs> yeah. Night Train. No proof. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Night Train No Proof is probably probably the most accurate description because the day after a Night Train binge, you're struggling to remember what anyone did. But there's evidence of all sorts of things, but no one has proof that anyone did anything. The worst thing I ever drank consistently for a period of time. And like I like I want to justify by saying like I there's a good point in my life like I totally could have been labeled an alcoholic. I drank a lot. College. This was pre-college. This was like when we were in the cusp of just drinking. So you just accepted whatever you could get someone to buy for you. Popov vodka. Popov. Popov. And tang. Not like water and tang. You just put a couple scoops of tang in the vodka and make a screwdriver. I've been there. That's awful. That oh, well, I've awful. never been there with. I've never been there with vodka, but I've been there with gin, and I used to put. Um, Oh, Tascarale. What what is that that coffee flavoring syrup? I used to put the raspberry coffee flavoring syrup in my gin. Okay. Um, it comes in the glass bottle. I always want to call it Tostinos, but that's yeah, a pizza. I, I, I don't know what about. it is. I don't coffee know what flavoring. it is. Yeah. So Megan refuses to drink gin, and that's because of me. And I'm so proud of that. Because when we first started hanging out way back when, I said, nobody will drink gin with me. I love gin. Will you drink gin with me? So she did. And now she will never drink it again. It's the proudest moment in our relationship. Yeah. Ruined her for gin. <laughs> you, you took her genity? I took her genity. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to end on that note. That is the best ending variety hours I've ever had. I'm so proud of you, that. You took her first genity. <laughs> I took her first genity. Anyway, this is Variety Hour. Please subscribe to us because that is just gorgeous. I don't know what else to say. This is what we got. Hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a like. Say it. Genity. No, 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 no. What? The intro. Oh, I don't got it. We don't have time.